Hey friends, it's Wednesday, which is the middle of the week. I slept like crap last night. Got like two hours of sleep for no good reason besides my body decided you don't need rest. You robot, you live without it. You know what else you need to live with? Disc plates. Go to displate.com forward slash UFD Tech and get these dope metal prints. Look at them. That Goku is so freaking amazing. Final Space, Cyberpunk. You can get nature. You can get a whole bunch of different designs from a whole bunch of different artists in so many different styles. And they easily mount with magnets and they plant trees. Use coupon code UFD to save 15% off. Go, 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 go to Displate and get your displates. Do it. But you know who says that you shouldn't have anything? Um, somebody from NVIDIA? That's a really bad segue. Anyways, obviously the super series of GPUs has been rolling out and uh, we are getting the 2080 super, I believe this coming Tuesday on the 23rd, we have the 2016, 2070 super that have already launched and the indication with all of the leaks and rumors that were happening beforehand was that there was going to be a 2080 Ti super coming out as well. However, it appears that Jeff Fisher from Nvidia has said that there would not be any sort of 2080 Ti super and that they would just go ahead and go with the current current lineup that's coming out, which is either him saying that we're not thinking about it right now and they might do it down the line, but given the fact that AMD is competing on the mid-tier stuff and not at the flagship level, they don't really need to launch it. But then I've also seen speculation that like, oh, it would step on the toes of the Titan RTX. When has NVIDIA ever cared about that? Do we not remember the 1080 Ti Titan X Pascal? Titan XP debacle that went down where it was all crazy stupidness where they're launching cards one right after the other and they launched two Titans in a single generation. Do you remember that? Yeah, Nvidia doesn't care. They'll sell it however they want to sell it. And I mean, considering the fact that they're now giving us GPUs that they should have given us over 10 months ago, you, you can see how like they're not really perturbed about stepping on themselves. It appears no 2080 Ti as of yet. I don't believe it's because they're not trying to step on the toes of the Titan lineup. I just think that they probably don't need to compete with AMD in that department. How about new? Also, in case you haven't heard, AMD actually intentionally played the game against Nvidia's super lineup with one of their uh, employees saying jabated on Twitter when they dropped the price of the Navi cards. And it wasn't that AMD actually had the indication that they were going to drop the prices from the get-go, rather the explanation that was given by the AMD exec was the fact that it was one of the strategies that they had lined up. They wanted to see what Nvidia was going to respond with in their super lineup. They wanted to see performance and pricing, and they knew that Nvidia is actually pretty stretched for pricing at the 2016, 2070 super level because of the GPU die size to fit in all of the tensor cores and ray tracing cores. And so they knew what they would have to compete on, which was price. And considering the fact that they're using seven nanometers, their die size is a lot smaller. Their cost of production is a lot less. And so they realized that they could do that. And he said it was nice to finally win one. So Nvidia saying no to a 2080 Ti Super, AMD saying debated. But it's good, I don't want a 2080 Ti Super, especially since we're trying to do a liquid cool build with all the best parts. If Nvidia released something right now that was different, it'd be like the Terry Crews build for Jay's Two Cents where he had 1080s or no, he had Titan X's lined up and then the 1080 Ti and Titan XP launched and he was like, gosh dang it, Nvidia, you could have told me. And then in case you've been hearing rumors about AMD Arcturus, which is supposed to be a next generation architecture, it appears that's not what it is. Actually, it's just going to be a professional level Vega card that should be rolling out sometime soon based on the Linux driver information, which stacks it directly against other Vega professional cards in the driver code. So there's a report coming out that both Intel and AMD are slated to launch new CPUs in October. Now you might be asking yourself, didn't AMD just launch new CPUs? And also aren't they launching the 3950X in September? Of which you would be right, but it appears, at least according to the reports, that the indication is that they're gonna be dropping Threadripper in October. So third gen Threadripper with Zen 2 performance, as well as extra cores, potentially even up to 64 cores, obviously would destroy whatever Intel has lined up in their 28 core ice chiller cooled thing. But, uh, or it could also be like we're getting the 9900 KS, which isn't gonna be great, because that sucks. But in case you wanna cool those CPUs, EK has just launched 
my favorite CPU block that I've ever seen. It is the Velocity Strike CPU block. It is matte black and nickel. I love it. It's shiny and not. It's amazing. Look at it. And then have you ever been thinking to yourself, gee, I wish my keyboard wasn't as stupid as everybody else's keyboards. I wish my keyboard had AI. Well, guess what? The friends over at Keystone are releasing a, or releasing, it's on Kickstarter, so that means it can never come out. But anyways, it's an open source analog keyboard that's supposed to have adaptive typing AI. Apparently, the way that the AI is going to work is it's gonna judge how you press certain keys and the depth that you typically travel and adjust the actuation point to your actual stroking style. Not the phrase I meant to say, but I'm leaving it in there. It's kind of intriguing whether or not this will actually happen. They've already hit a 300% of their Kickstarter goal within a day. If you wanna pick up one of your own, it starts at $150 for the TKL version. But again, as with all Kickstarters, no guarantee that any of this might come out. We'll do our best to potentially even get a review sample on the UFD Tech channel to check it out. In case you want one, check it out. The link is in the description. And then, why do I say and then? No and then. No, and then. Some Tesla employees have been coming out saying that with the Model 3's production, which has reached ultra amazing proportions, shipping as many in three months as they ever could, they're saying that uh, they had to cut some extreme corners in order to make that happen. Not just the fact that they might have had to work in bad or work in bad conditions, but also the fact that uh, if things were broken on the car, they just had to put electrical tape on it and kind of fix it and just be like. You, you, I'm not gonna worry about you anymore. What are you doing? Trust me. So Model 3's made with electrical tape. Tesla has come out and said that, uh, no, electrical tape just comes stock from the factory where we get those parts and you're supposed to take it off. And also, this is not representative of how we wanna treat our employees. We're gonna look into this. This isn't how we live. Primitive, but amazing technology. Who do you believe? Well, I'll tell you who I'm believing in, Elon Musk. Cause there was a Neuralink press conference yesterday that kind of indicated what the future is going to look like for uh, AI tapping your brains. And it appears that they're trying or going to be aiming for starting human trials of injecting your brain with little threads that are supposed to connect with a little doodad that you place behind your ear and then you have computer brace brain power. Anyways, they're looking to do that next year. So if you wanna be one of the first human test subjects, just tweet at Elon Musk. He seems to be active there right now. Right now, the surgery requires drilling holes, but apparently they're hoping that lasers will be able to do it in the future, because lasers are magic. You know what else is magic? This Lotus hypercar, which apparently can charge fully in nine minutes. It can go from zero to 100 kilometers in under three seconds. It can hit a top speed of 200 miles per hour, and it can reach that nine minute charging time with a charger that doesn't actually exist anywhere in the world. You need to have an 800 kilowatt charger, which is ridiculous, uh, it doesn't actually exist. However, the most powerful one available is 350 kilowatts, of which it would charge the Lotus Hypercar in 18 minutes, which, Freaking what? I mean, is anything, something's gotta like explode eventually on that. But I mean, the car costs what, a, over a million? 1.7 million pounds, $2.1 million. Do you listen to podcasts though? Well, guess what? Apparently Apple doesn't like you listening on other providers. They're gonna start rolling out cash to get exclusivity rights on Apple Podcasts, which actually isn't a terrible move. Apple Podcast is a free app, so it's not like it's gonna be behind a paywall. I'm, Slightly okay with this, slightly not. I would then follow whatever pod, I would probably just abandon them. There's no podcast that I follow that dearly that I'd move with them to a new platform. It's on my most convenient podcasting app. That's what I want. And have you ever wondered if you could have a tiny robot in your body that's powered by your own vibrations? Well now Georgia Tech has unveiled a video of a super tiny micro robot that is powered by the body. They're hoping that it can do things inside your body for no batteries. So like if it dissolves in you, hopefully it's just plastic poisoning you get and not actual metal poisoning. <laughs> Speaking of universities though, not to, not to dismiss Georgia Tech. I mean, but it's a crappy school anyways. ACC, come on. 
Purdue University, they have unveiled their ability to create transistor-like gates using qubits. They use quantum computing to make transistor gates that open and close, but since it's quantum, they're technically open and closed at the same time. And you can have an infinite possibility of how many times it's open and closed in a single nanosecond. It's quantum. You know what else is quantum? This camera. Sony unveiled the A7R Mark IV coming in with 61 megapixels of full frame, has eye tracking autofocus in video mode, not just in photo mode, up to 10 frames per second on shooting, dual SD cards, 15 stops of dynamic range, 5.5 stop, five axis in body image stabilization, and a whole bunch of other amazing things. It looks like the A7S series is officially dead. They're just gonna be moving everything into the A7 and A7R, which is fair. We're shooting this on an A7 III. I'm kinda hyped for this. It's gonna cost $3,500, which is not terrible considering what you're getting and we'll probably have one by this time next year. You know what else you'll have by this time next year? 50 million streaming services for your video games because Ubisoft is unveiling their game library of their Uplay Plus subscription service. You add this to the Origin one you have, you add this to Stadia, you add this to Xbox Game Pass. You're just, you're spending $100 a month in video games. Don't do it, friends. But you know what you should do? You should head on over to Reddit tomorrow, July, July 18th, because the people for Google Stadia are going to be hosting an AMA, or also known as an Ask Me Anything, to kind of discuss everything that's going on with Google Stadia. So if you have any questions regarding the streaming game service, you should head on over to Reddit and talk to them there. But you know what you should do to me? Let's talk to me in the comments, because this episode's over. I'm done talking to you. Type down below about your favorite thing that I said. Also, don't forget to check out Displates. Don't metal prints, displate.com forward slash UFD tech official. UFD has a coupon code, save 15%. Also, while, you, while, while you're clicking on things, you might as well click on the like button, please. Also, click on the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell. And potentially even maybe considering consider supporting us on Patreon. Give us your money. I'm kidding. Or am I? I'm Brett with the Hot News Channel. Love you too. Bye. Stroking style.